So it's ten past seven on Friday evening. Um, as far as I can tell, I'm the only person in the entire library where I've come to do my work. This is the Clinical Sciences Building at University Hospital. I quite like this here. It's a stand of all the sort of current, really popular medical books. We've got Adam Kay's new one here. This lady works at this very hospital. So I'm on my research block. And what this block involves is lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of numbers. Those numbers are all hand typed, so I'm sure you can appreciate why it's taken um, several weeks to collect them. Now, obviously, I can't show you on an actual proper patient scan exactly how I would do this because patient confidentiality, um, I've got to be really careful with putting any data online. Thankfully, if I scoot over here, I can show you on my laptop the sort of thing that I have been doing for the last few weeks. I'm essentially looking at lots of these images. This is what's called a CT stack. CT scan takes lots of slices through the body in different orientations. We can have an axial, like a horizontal cut through. We can have a sagittal, which is like a vertical slice through, or coronal, which would be sort of face on through you. This is an axial stack. So we're starting here at the top of the cranium, coming down. These are the vertebrae in the neck. You can tell that by these two holes that they have, which are your vertebral arteries. Pass through, you can see. As we go down, they become slightly more angular. This angle becomes steeper. And then we come into our first thoracic vertebra, T1. So what am I interested in, exactly, if I just find... You can see C1 and C2 articulating here, the odontoid process. Here's C3. That'll do. Essentially what I'm looking at is how easy it is to insert screws from the anterior side of these vertebrae into this structure here, the pedicle, which normally you wouldn't be able to see uh, during a surgery because your view is coming from the top here looking down. This is the back of the neck, this is the front of the neck. So how can we put screws in to stabilise a fracture from the anterior approach while avoiding these two holes which contain sympathetic nerve bundles and the vertebral arteries, which if you puncture them, the person's quite likely to die. And so here are some of my scribblings on features that I can actually measure. Now if I have a coronal window, which I do, this might make a bit more sense. So what I've been looking at this evening, or this morning, should I say, is these kind of hook-shaped parts at the top of the vertebrae are what are called the uncinate processes. And what I'm looking at doing is relating the, the various anatomical features of these unsinate processes to the ideal, what we call the pedicle entry point, the place in the vertebra here where you would want to insert your screw to stabilise the neck in the event of a fracture. And my supervisor's basically left this, this kind of thing up to me. So the last time I met him, I produced some of these diagrams and said, look, these are all the things that it occurs to me that I might want to investigate, all the things I can calculate, all the values that I have, and then we do some feedback that's gone on the floor. And essentially in a few weeks I have to hand in a poster based on all the work that I've done, statistically analyse all the different vertebral levels that I've done these measurements at, and it's just thousands and thousands of numbers input into Excel spreadsheets. It's a good opportunity. Um, SSC2, our student selected component, you can do something that you're interested in. So I knew I wanted to pick a neurosurgery project, of, of which there are a few. I think I have picked one of the harder ones, um, which might cause me some problems because one of the fundamental issues with this project that I'm working on, as far as I'm concerned, is that I have job applications coming up um, just under a year from now. Papers take a very long time to get published, relatively speaking, particularly a project like this where it's going to require a lot of very careful reiteration, analysis, you know, new developments, redoing things. Basically, my feeling is that this is going to take far, far too long to get published for it to be worth anything for at least my foundation job applications, maybe for specialty training because that's that's at least a few more years away 
and there's definitely scope to get this work published in that time but because it's so interesting and quite a, a big deal of a project and, and how difficult it is that's kind of hamstrung me um, to a certain extent in it being valuable for this next round of applications so what that means is in the next few months I'm going to have to pick up another couple of research projects um, that hopefully have a little bit more chance of getting published so you know it's a balancing act and given guys that I've just had my first day of AC2 advanced cases 2 we're back in lectures now two days a week until Christmas three days a week clinical which I'm quite happy about to be back actually on the wards doing things see all this dam put on my wall there we go I should probably do something about but I think that's where I'll wrap up my video on the project I've been doing um, hopefully I'll be able to present it at a conference or something at least uh, I'll take you along with me obviously if I do until Christmas I'll try and focus on interview content I've had a lot of requests off the back of the chest x-ray one that just launched to do things like ECGs head CTs obviously I'll respond to feedback from you guys as to what content you actually want to see but otherwise that's it that'll do us for now I'll see you in the next proper video